Welcome to Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast, where we hear real stories from real people and we tackle all sorts of fun topics in the areas of business, marketing, entrepreneurship, mindset, the arts, and well, life itself. It's amazing what you'll pick up. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the suspended animation podcast. Hopefully, everybody's doing fantastically well. I'm Darren Saul, your host, and I have the lovely Irina Geller back in the studio today. How are you doing, Irina? I'm doing very well. How are you? Very, very well. Irina's been on the show before a few times Mm -hmm. and always gives us plenty of value and plenty of inspiration to think about. Today, I hope so. <laughs> oh, I know you will. And today we're going to be chatting all about why it's so hard to lose weight during menopause mm. and what you can do about it. Very, very mm-hmm. interesting. It is interesting. But uh, before we jump in, I thought I'd give everybody a little bit of a snapshot into who Irina is. So after 25 years battling her own demons with unhealthy eating, Irina finally made peace with food following a massive mind transformation. By shredding her mental weight, she also lost an incredible 50 kgs over two years. Her expertise today is shaped by her personal journey, paired with qualifications in biomedical science, nutrition, positive psychology, health and wellness coaching, and personal training. Irina specializes in helping smart, capable women, women with literally too much on their plate, dissolve their struggle with emotional eating. She's also the published author of Put Down Your Fork and Pick Up Your Life. I love that. Mm. Marina lives in Sydney with her husband, George, dog Teddy, and actively cultivates her love for all things Mexican. Yes, I do. So, (laughs) Irina, where did the Mexican come from now? Um, I've always loved uh, Mexican. I just, I I love the colours. I love, um, I also love the fact that they celebrate death. Like they've got a, you know, a festival called okay. Day of the Dead. So they just, I love their positivity, the bright colours, um, the food. No, it's okay. So you don't but, cook um, much Mexican food? It's okay. It depends. You've got to go to a good restaurant to have good Mexican. I you can have good Mexican or you can have bad Mexican. I agree. I love the yeah. fajitas. Good old so do I. chicken yeah. and beef fajitas if they're done well. Mm, if okay. they've done well. Exactly. That's if exactly right. Well. Yeah. <laughs> exactly anyway, right. We, we can talk about food forever. We could, um, but we're going to put down our fork and we're going to put down our fork podcast in today's episode. As I mentioned, we're going to be chatting a lot about menopause. So tell us more about your personal journey and why mm. this particular niche is so interesting for you. Okay. Well, I recently went through menopause and I realized that, um, a lot of things change. Your energy levels change. I mean, aside from the fact that, um, your hormone levels change. And I'm talking about hormones like estrogen, progesterone and testosterone. They have an impact on other hormones like insulin, cortisol, uh, leptin and ghrelin, which are your hunger and your satiety hormones. And there's three stages of menopause. There's perimenopause, there's menopause and there's postmenopause. And we don't necessarily need to go into great detail about that. But I guess because I recently went through it, I've realized that the things that motivated me before menopause were different to the things that motivate me now. Like, for example, if I was motivated, you know, about getting into an amazing outfit, now I'm more motivated about being able to keep up with my grandkids, you know, like running around with my grandkids. It doesn't mean that I don't like to dress well, but your motivation shifts, your energy shifts, um, you experience more anxiety. Look, it's not exactly the same for everyone. Everyone's different. Um, so there's usually a decrease in energy, energy levels, you know, like energy drops, um, inability to cope with day-to-day stuff, um, mood swings. Flushes. Short, hot flushes. Um, I wasn't even going to mention that because that's a given, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but, you know, anxiety may increase. And it also depends if you are... You know, I'm neurodivergent. I have ADHD. I have anxiety and depression in my family and also depersonalization disorder. So, of course, menopause hit me like a bullet between the eyes, you know, and I thought I was going mad. And so, you know, balancing your hormones 
is really, really important because what happens is your liver also becomes sluggish. Yeah. But I'll get into a little bit more of that um, in a second when we talk right. about why it's so difficult to lose weight in menopause. There's also the uh, loss of sex drive, um, you know, difficulty having intercourse, your cravings may increase. Um, and right. for people who are emotional eaters, which is, you know, um, what I've got a lot of experience with, that can really ramp up. Yeah. And um, a lot of women lose hope and their self-esteem and their confidence goes down because they think to themselves, oh, my God, I've been an emotional eater for the last 40 years and, you know, like I'm going through a change now. Well, what's on the other side? And, and so it's, it's, it's natural to feel um, lost. Sure, sure. Right? But it doesn't mean that it's the end of your life. In fact, I think that menopause can be a beautiful thing because you no longer have to worry about periods, right? That's right. Well, and yeah. uh, falling pregnant. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you tweak things and you, you know, you see the right people and you yeah. work with the right people, it can actually be the best time of your life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I, and I think it's really important. You, you touched on some great um, points there. Obviously, mm. the dietary and the weight focus components are one thing, but the mm -hmm. mindset is another. Totally. Yeah. And I think if you can really think about, you know, how you're feeling and how you, what, what else can you do in your life apart from just the physical component to mm. make sure that you're feeling good about your life and feeling good exactly. about yourself and, you know, the rituals that you have to put in place and the disciplines that you have to put in place to make yourself mm. get up in the morning, put on your, put on your makeup, get out there and, you know, yeah. tackle the world like you always did. Yeah. That's really important as well. So, you know, some of the things that also happen, um, and I haven't mentioned that, there's also, um, there may be a decreased um, ability to do certain exercises. Mm -hmm. But what is really, really important in menopause is to do resistance training. Right, yeah. Because not only does that improve your mood, it also um, helps you to maintain muscle mass. Right. And good because bones. You, and good bones, muscle. right? Because with menopause comes the, you know, the risk of osteoporosis and... Um, muscle loss, um, when you lose muscle, you know, there's lots of other things that can take place. Um, what, what else did I, um, you know, there may be a risk of burnout because people yeah. or women try and go at the same pace as what they were going at. Yeah. Um, but they actually, they don't necessarily need to slow down. They need to learn how to manage their energy, yeah. Yeah. you see, and that's the key. And that's one thing that, that was one of the tips. I'm probably going a little bit of ahead of, oh, ahead of myself. Oh, good. But um, one thing that I learned is managing your energy, working out, you know, what part of the day are you at your most focused? You know, for some people, it may be mornings. For some people, it may be afternoons or during the day. And eating according to your body type like becomes more important than ever, yeah. you know, um, so that you've got enough fuel to feed your brain and to feed your body to exercise. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So let's talk a bit more about that. Mm. I mean, what in terms of your situation, for example, when are you most high energy and how do you eat for your um, energy level? Sure. Okay. Well, um, I'm my my energy is at its highest in the morning. Yeah, me too. Okay. Right. So, like, I'm talking about like you know getting up at five thirty, six o'clock yep. in the morning. But the thing is, I used to get up probably at four thirty or five. Right. Wow. And so for me to try and push myself in that direction is just too difficult. I actually need more sleep. Yeah. Right? I used to be able to skate on five or six hours. Mm -hmm. Now I need a good solid seven hours. Yeah, like yeah. For me, seven hours is important because then I function well. Yep. I have enough energy. And intermittent fasting has been, um, you know, um, a game changer for me. Also because of my neurodivergence. So I give my body a break from the food yep and then i have my first meal at about 11 a.m okay and i make sure that there's enough protein enough carb and enough fat for my body type and i'm not talking about body types where you're a mesomorph or an endomorph i'm talking about metabolic typing yeah yeah, yeah. right so for me um having moderate fat is important because if i don't have enough fat my brain doesn't work well enough i don't have enough energy to lift weights. Yeah. So personally, I do cardio in the morning and weights in the afternoon. Wow. And how when many I've times a week eaten. would you train? 
Um, I pretty much exercise seven days a week. Wow. I do weights about five times a week, Fantastic. but I'm not. The difference is I practice self-compassion. I'm not hard on myself. If I miss a workout, I miss a workout. Yeah. Um, I try and move as much as I can during the day because I've got a, you know, a sitting job. And so every hour I walk for five minutes. Yeah. And I think that's important for all of us because we're all doing more Very of important. at our desk in front of our computer. Exactly. In front yeah. of Zoom. We have to push ourselves to get up and be mobile. That's it. Well, I set the alarm. Yeah, no, for that's pretty much every hour or one and a half hours wow. to move five minutes, stretch, and just, you know, get outside of something, like whatever I can fit into my day or whatever, you know, like, but it's not what I can fit into my day. It's what actually works for me. And yeah. then I build my day around it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, I think that's Whereas, really important. You have to yeah. build your day and your life around you. Exactly. Yeah. Because when you feel good, everything else is beautiful. That's right. You see the world through a different lens. Yeah, you see the world through a different lens. You have better relationships with your family and friends. You're better. You're more productive at work. Mm. You, know, you have more goals and you have more inspiration and creativity. Totally. Everything just yeah. flows on from that. Yeah. yeah. But it's really important not to overwork. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to like, you know, like we've talked about fitting um, things in around your or self-care, whatever you want to call it, or yeah, self-love, yeah. compassion. Yeah. Um, because when your cup is empty, you have nothing to give. And that becomes more obvious in menopause. Right. Yep. Because you have, I don't want to call it limited energy, but yeah. you have a certain Less amount of energy. energy than you did. Right? Yeah. It's like um, decision fatigue. Mm -hmm. Do you know yeah. what decision yeah. fatigue is? Yeah. 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 When you've made so many decisions during the day, if it comes to nighttime, and you haven't planned your dinner, you haven't got food ready, chances are you'll have takeout. Yeah, yeah. Because your brain is tired it's and tired. your it's emotions kick in. Absolutely. Yeah, and your emotions kick in, especially yeah. if you're an emotional eater. That's right, that's right. Mm. Wow. Well, I mean, let's jump into weight loss and how to lose weight during menopause if that's something that you need. And to maintain it, yeah. Maintain it. Well, the question is, why is it so hard to lose weight and keep it off in menopause? Yeah. Well, the answer is, hormones because right. your brain uses hormones to regulate every metabolic process in your body yep. including hunger and fat storage so in order to achieve and to achieve and maintain a healthy weight you need to change your lifestyle habits to achieve hormonal balance because exactly. what happens when you're going to menopause is your hormones are not balanced right, right. so there's three things that occur that affect your hormones weight and energy um, most women are at, after the age of 35 are at their busiest and most responsible time of their life. Right. They've probably got teenage children, right? Because a lot of women have had kids later. Yeah. They've been busy with their careers, which affects their stress and hormones. Mm -hmm. um, 20 plus years of lifestyle habits start to catch up with you. That affects your insulin and blood sugar. Right. And your body undergoes age-related hormonal and metabolic shifts which obviously affects your hormones. So how do they um, cause weight gain? You become less tolerant to carbs, mm -hmm. to carbohydrates. You may develop sweet cravings, love handles, and feel tired more often, which yep. relates back to the energy. Yep. And your metabolism slows down, so you have less energy and find it harder to lose weight, right? And stress drives dangerous visceral fat, which is caused by cortisol. Right. You know the belly fat? Yep, yep. Yeah? And your liver becomes quite sluggish because of the hormone imbalance. Okay. So it's, we're talking about hormones, not just progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone, which, by the way, testosterone, uh, when it's down, affects your muscle mass. Definitely. And resistance training is what helps to drive the testosterone up which inadvertently drives up your sex drive. Yeah. I didn't know that women had much testosterone. but obviously Of course they do. Really yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know that men have a little bit of estrogen and progesterone. Yeah. But women obviously have a bit of testosterone as well. Testosterone is a very important hormone. Wow. Okay. Very important. And when it goes down, it affects your mood, it affects your sex drive yep. and um, your muscle mass. So when you do resistance training, you drive up the levels of testosterone. That's right. So yeah. the same goes for men. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because men start to lose testosterone up to the age of 35. Yep, and we should be doing the same things. We should be doing a lot of resistance training and well, weight-bearing training as well. Yeah, not, I mean, should. Um, 
you probably want to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when vital hormones like insulin, leptin, cortisol aren't regulated, your body tends to store fat and you tend yes. to crave unhealthy foods. Yeah. And as you mentioned and, before, you get, you know, you're potentially more emotional as well. So totally. You start running to the fridge and to the pantry and you're more of an emotional eater, which, you know, again, further enhances this cycle. Yeah, especially if they've been your coping mechanisms in the past. Mm -hmm. What happens is, you know, people say, oh, it gets harder to lose weight as you get older. Yeah. So what that actually means is that your body doesn't work as well. That's right. As what metabolism it slows down. Right. But it doesn't mean that you can't reverse those things. That's right. Yep. You can, right? But obviously with a bit of a help, with a certain, you know, like um, nutrition program, which is individual yeah. because we're all different. We all have different lifestyles, different needs, di different habits. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Mm. And in terms of, you know, how you work with people then that mm. have the, have particular issues around menopause, mm. how do you tell us a bit more about your process? How do you walk them through okay. what to do? How do, yeah. you, how do you consult with them? How does it all yeah. work? Well, I use a program called Downsize Me. I run it under license. It's an eight-week nutrition and coaching program. So it works on the body yep. by nutrition and um, the coaching works on the mindset. So helping you to feel more confident, you know, um, improve your self-esteem. Because most women who come to me have tried so many diets mm -hmm. and they've lost confidence that they can actually be successful. And when they hit menopause, that confidence goes down even further because they yeah. think to themselves, wow, I haven't been able to do this in all these years. Um, I'm probably destined to remain like this forever. Yeah. And that's not a nice um, thought, is it? No, no, no. When no, no, you no. feel helpless and hopeless. Yeah. So I coach these women to change their mindset. And um, Downsize Me is a three-step um, program, which is evidence-based and scientifically proven okay. um, healthy eating plan and coaching program for people that actually want long-term results so it's not just about going on a diet losing the weight and then what do you do after that that's right it's not a short-term band-aid no it's a mindset no. change it's a mindset change it's really um you know we we use we talk about self-compassion we talk about your habits we talk about habits that you know you already have that are running really well and what um Habits can you, you know, add on to those and getting your long-term eating habits right and eating right for your metabolic type, yeah. managing stress and managing your emotions, um, rewiring your triggers to want to eat, the urges and getting organized, which is so important, you know, creating some structure in your life to help you manage your busy and stressful days, right? So what do you do when you come home after a stressful day? Do you you know, go for a walk or do you open the fridge and pour yourself a glass of wine and um, yep. sit and down with call, a packet you know, of chippies? Call delivery right? or menu yeah. log or Uber yeah. Eats. Right, okay. Yeah. Because it's too so easy. That's why getting organised is so important because I do food planning. Yeah. Uh, when I say do food planning, I for me it takes 15 minutes each week mm -hmm. because I've got a shopping list that I work off. I just tweak it. I decide what I'm going to cook for the next week, including, yep. you know, snacks lunches dinners and then i create my shopping list from that and um Perfect. i do food prep twice a week sometimes three times a week and i never have to think about what i have to eat because it's ready and it's there yeah, it i'm exactly mean, the same i'm exactly yeah, the same i used right? to be a little, little bit more ad hoc but now yeah. i shop every monday morning i know exactly mm. what i need for the week mm. and then i i start to do a bit of food prep in terms of you know mm. portion sizing and yeah. freezing meats and chickens and fish and yeah i can still cook a la carte every day sure but i have much more preparation around it and my process is half taken care of and i exactly. enjoy it and you enjoy it that's right no it's not a stressful event anymore yeah and i think it's really important to also um source new recipes mm -hmm. you know not just to be stuck with the same old stuff because it does get boring you can yeah, actually absolutely. make healthy food so delicious yeah. there are it's so many creative spices. as well it's fun exactly it's fun and it doesn't have to take a long time no. i mean you know shoving a piece of salmon into um you know like the air fryer or the or the oven and then making um you know like a healthy salad yep 
you know, with avocado and feta cheese and olives. I mean, God, what's not to like, you know? You know, using, putting something in the griller, really easy, really simple. That's it, yeah, yeah. Um, You know, sautéing something in a little bit of olive oil and garlic and onion and Mm. a bit of chilli and off you go. It's, It's that simple. And the thing is, if you do get stuck, there are healthy takeaway options. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can go to your local um, fish shop and ask them to grill a piece of salmon for you. That's right. And yeah. buy a salad from them, or yeah. go to the chicken shop and get a you know barbecue chook. Yeah. Take the That's skin right. off, or maybe you eat the skin. Like you know, yeah. it's it's different for everyone. Correct. Because people say to me, "Should I eat the skin on my chicken?" Yeah. And I say to them, "Well, what else are you eating during the day? <laughs> yeah. What's your activity level? You know, <laughs> like I mean, it's a really hard question to answer. That's Should right. I? Can I eat avocado? Yep. Can I eat feta cheese? Can I eat cheese? Well, what else are you eating? Yeah. So you can, you know, you can eat everything in moderation. That's right. And I think Nothing it's important is... to know your own body type and your own totally. body metabolism. And over time, you start to fine tune intuitive eating. program, intuitive eating. And then you're you talking know, about intuitive eating. I love it. And then yeah. you know exactly what to eat and your weight will hardly fluctuate because you know your body. Yeah. And look, the thing is, there are different body types and some people do find it more difficult to lose weight and to maintain it because genetically they may be predisposed to obesity. You know, there's a lot of things going on there, but it doesn't mean that you can't take control. And I think having that confidence and having that self-esteem and believing that you can create that change is what is really important. And that's what I help my clients to achieve. So, it I sounds like, so you, st- you do a lot of work, obviously, around the mindset and the education, as opposed to just the execution. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the nutrition plan yeah. is a nutrition plan that you don't have to follow to a T. There yeah. are so many different options. Yeah. You want to eat three times a day, eat three times a day. You want to have snacks in between, have snacks in between. It's all built around your personal lifestyle, your level of activity. Yeah. I mean, if you're a you know, if you if you run every day, you probably need more calories That's right. to have the energy um, yeah. and to have the enthusiasm. You know, like this, it's it's so complicated. I don't want to make it out that it's complicated, but there's a lot more going on that kind of meets the eye than just what's on your plate. It's but what's on your plate actually um, affects your mood. Yeah, yeah. Funny. And for some people, more than others. Like I Absolutely. know that when I eat off my plan i don't feel so great yep. my confidence starts to go down that's right and also your your mental stress level goes up when you're totally. not following a process because then you start using so much more mental energy exactly and, and it, through anxiety and why did i do that and how am i going to correct for that and mm. if i would have just done that i could have just gone on with my day and i wouldn't have even worried about yeah. that i could focus on other things so yeah it's so much to, to be said about your mental state yeah but again, having said that, um, perfection, we're not looking for perfection. That's right. And you can't be perfect every day. You can't day. be perfect every day. And that's where self-compassion comes in. That's right. So if you have fallen off your plan. Yeah. And it happens. It happens. Um, you use self-compassion to bring yourself back yeah. in. So, okay. Let's just get You back realize on. that, you know, it's part of the human experience. That's right. Yeah. And one thing that I actually want to say, which a lot of people are not don't understand or I would like them to understand I'll rephrase that so I would like them to understand is that 50% of your emotions uh, will be not so comfortable right yeah. when I say 50% I don't mean 50% every single day yeah. it's part of the hu- suffering is part of the human experience yeah. and if the moment that I realized that all of a sudden those emotions became not so hard to deal with mm-hmm. Because I thought, you know what, I'm not the only one that's going through this. There are so many other people that suffer in all different ways. I mean, look at what's going on in Ukraine at the moment. That's right. Right? And I'm Ukrainian too. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So when you realise that, you start to be more compassionate with yourself. Yeah. And compassion leads to better results. It's been proven. Because when you're nice to yourself, it's like being nice to a friend. If you're going to be nice to your friend, your friend will be nice back to you, right? That's yeah, not very sure. good English. If you're nice <laughs> to your body and you're nice to yourself, guess what? Yeah, it's nice back to you. I love it, it might just be nice back to you, hey? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and after all those years of beating yourself up and telling yourself that you're this 
and your yeah. dad, you can actually say to yourself, you know what? I'm doing the best that I can with what I've got, with where I am. That's right. And, I think and that's that makes me really well. proud. Yeah. It's yeah. really important in itself just to say, to be able to say, I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. Better than with what I've nothing. got. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But a lot yeah. of it, we, t- we tend to, as human beings, we tend to focus on all the things that are going wrong. That's right. And we tend right? to focus on everybody else. Why do they look like that? Why do they yeah. eat that and I can't eat? You know, mm. and we tend to always put ourselves up against other people, which is yeah. a problem. And we never know what's going on in other people's lives, do 100%, 100%. we? 100%. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Your, your own race. That's right. You know, exactly. Just embrace that, learn and be the best version of yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Because there's only, there's, there's no one else like you. No. So you're unique. You might as well um, enhance that uniqueness and uh-huh. celebrate it and, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I think that forward. really, that also is powerful in itself. The more totally. you embrace your own authenticity and your own mm-hmm. uniqueness, the more comfortable you feel, the more success you get in all aspects of your life. Yeah. Because you know, you're just comfortable with who you are and people are drawn yeah. to people mm. who are comfortable who, with who they are. Exactly. Yeah. And you know what else I find? Um, being proud of yourself is just such Definitely. a motivator. You know, when you've um, ticked yeah. some of the boxes or some of the things that you wanted to tick and all of it, that creates more confidence, Definitely. you know, and you just think, hey, you know what, this is possible. And that for me is so um, big because for years I spent years not believing in myself, thinking that I'm, hopeless and helpless and I'm different and why do I have panic attacks and no one else does and am I possessed by this and my that like yeah you know it's um yeah I think it's really true and the other thing that you know it's a really good point to further build on that is I think once you've achieved one thing that was difficult in your life whether Mm. it be work whether it be eating Mm. then you can have the confidence to achieve many more to take it on other kind of things. Trickle, it trickles on effect, this totally. success mechanism. Exactly. And I yeah. love that. I think it's so powerful when you can Same. When you can look back and say, okay, look what I've done over the last three to six months. I've gone to Irina and I've got this under control. Mm. What's my next challenge? What else what have I always exactly. wanted to do? What else can I tackle now? And that's the thing. Oh, when you, and Yeah, I'm, exactly. When you feel good, when you wake up in the morning feeling good, chances of you exercising – are much higher that's right. when you wake up in the morning feeling shit. Yeah, yeah you've really right. got to push yourself. Yeah, definitely, right? Yeah. So feeling good is so important. It is so much more important than weight loss. Yeah, because exactly. when you feel good, you'll lose the weight. That's it right. may take a bit longer, but you know. Yeah. And really, it's that's the most important thing to feel good every day. Love it. It. doesn't and mean you will feel good every day. You know, you might feel, yeah, day, but yeah. you do your best. <laughs> you do your best, exactly. That's yeah. right. And you, yeah. and you create a ritual around your daily routine yeah. to help you feel good. Yeah, and to take the stress out of it. Because when you have systems in place, yep. you don't have to worry That's about right. doing something. Yeah. yeah. Very true. I think mm. I was listening to a great conference yesterday and they were talking about systemizing your business. But basically it applies to everything in life. The more you systemize... Does. For life, the mm. more freedom you have to create and be happy and explore all the things you want to explore because all that stress is taken away. Yeah, but then you come um, up against um, what type of a uh, um, person you are because there are people who are rebels. Uh-huh. There are people who are questioners, like I'm a questioner. Right. For me to take something on, I've got to do my own research. Yes. Right. So it's it's about how do I, it's, it's the tendency. It's Gretchen Rubin. Um, Ruben's quiz, which has four tendencies: wow. upholder, um, rebel, um, questioner, and I can't remember the fourth one. I'm sorry. Okay, great. Um, it's the person that always does things for other people. Um, okay, the, the giver or the uh, the pleaser or the pleaser, something the like that. Yeah. Like that. So knowing your tendency, which is something that we actually um, do in the program, mm-hmm. helps you to work out how to set things up so that because when you have knowledge about you know, the way you do things, whether it's good or bad, we're not judging here, but you have the tool. Self-awareness. You know Self-awareness, you right? Yeah. yeah. Who you are and you can work with that and actually do things better. Yeah. 
So true. I love it. And mm. have you got any great um, case studies or examples of, you know, people with menopause oh. that have come to you and you've been yeah. able to really achieve incredible results in a three to six month period? Yeah, well, look, I'm not going to mention any names because a lot of, and this is one of the reasons why it's so hard for me to get testimonials because yeah. most people I work with want to remain <laughs> anonymous, you know. So um, but that's okay. Look, um, recently, um, a lady that went through the program, when I say recently, she went through the program a year ago okay, wow. and she lost something in the vicinity of 15 kilos. And she, the thing that she said to me that really stuck, she did give me a testimonial, just right. that I can't use it, right? Sure, sure. She said to me, I finally found my um, permanent solution, not a Band-Aid solution. Wow. And she has actually gone on to lose 35 kilos. Wow. She runs every day. Wow. She, um, she's just a new person. And it's That's just so pleasing to see. I mean, stuff the testimonial. I don't want them. I just yeah, want to. Just the results you know, are amazing. Just the results, just, yeah. Just the fact that you've changed someone's life so yeah. dramatically. Yeah. And look, the thing is that some people go through the program and don't make such huge changes because they don't work the program. Yeah. They may not be ready, you know, um, to do, to make the changes. It may be too much for them. So, you know, sometimes we try and dilute it a little bit and maybe make the program a little bit longer so they may yeah. pay for an extra few sessions. It works differently for everyone. But one thing that 99% of my clients walk away with is a different mindset. Yep. Being nicer to themselves, right? Recognizing their inner critic, being able to deal with their inner critic and basically seeing life through a different lens. Yeah. You know, yes, they have healthier habits. Yes, they're more organized. But just um, another thing that one of my clients said is I've, um, I've lost 10 kilos, but I've gained um, confidence, you know, ah, like so it's a loss of weight, a yeah. gain of confidence. She didn't just gain confidence because she lost the weight. She gained confidence because she started to see um things with a different mindset she started to understand herself yeah exactly than, and that's so more important than ever before isn't that amazing yeah understanding yourself and what works for you yep. yeah very true that's incredible. yeah and so how much time at the beginning of the program do you actually spend diving into all the mindset and you know that psychological side of things before you get into the rest well usually um someone before they join the program i do a one-hour strategy session with them so i really get a lot of information from that session. Right. Before that, I do a 30-minute um, session with them. So in those one and a half hours, I already know a lot about them. So yeah. when we start, um, we do up to about an hour a week. Yep. Some people actually um, request more sessions okay. and find in the first two weeks they may need more support. Again, we're all different. Yeah, I suppose some people would need more, a more of a sense of accountability more than anything else. Totally. Accountability is so important. Yeah. And um, they do homework every week. Wow. So if you're serious about making a change, there's about 15 to 20 minutes worth of homework yeah. um, that they do. And that solidifies um, what they learn. And um, we set goals every week. We set a vision the first week, set goals, um, small goals. Nice. I believe in small goals, yep. right? Yep. And when they achieve them, they feel so much more confident. That's great. And, then and that's so great that to see. Do you find that once someone has started to achieve great results and the program is coming to an mm. end, they might come and see you every three to six months just for a little maintenance dose? Or they may want to continue. Oh, Some continue. people, right. okay. I've had clients who have continued from eight weeks to six months Wow! because they may want to make other changes. They've right. seen the results that they're getting and they just want to continue. Some people um, go once a month, right. once every two weeks. So it works differently different people some people do the eight weeks and they're done okay. you yeah. know they feel um, confident enough to go out on their own and yeah. i honor and respect that yep, yep. yeah everybody's different mm. and i suppose then you can work with people all around the world exactly no yeah issues. Mm. Great. i'm just about to actually this year i'm going to sit for an exam with nbwc okay. which will qualify me as a coach that can work all around the world wow yeah, recognized all around the world. Yeah. yeah fantastic. So I'm pretty excited about that. Well, yes. How many years has it been for you in, in this field of study? It's been um, nine years now. Nine years. Mm. That's a lot of knowledge. Mm. But, you know, my past, my previous career, which was like 25 years, like 
the fashion industry that seems yeah. like another lifetime wow, yeah, yeah you know it's it's really interesting <laughs> it's um it's as if i've been doing this forever yeah absolutely. yeah mm. do you miss the fashion at all um i love fashion like even though i said that my motivators are a bit different i still yeah. i will always love fashion yeah that's right. i mean you only have to look at my nails, nails. and you know my <laughs> lipstick and my eyelashes you know like yeah. i it's it's a part of me that'll yeah, right. that'll always be there, but I'm probably not as driven so much by it. Like I don't need to have the latest outfit. I don't need to, yeah, because I feel confident enough um, yeah. in a black t-shirt with a v V-neck t-shirt um, than having to have like the latest jacket or the latest pants. And so yeah. that's the difference. Yeah, I don't. I was just about to say, you know, probably, to probably would confident. have been for you, you know, different through different aspects of your life. You had different drivers and now you don't need the um, emotional return that you got from the fashion. Exactly. Industry. Yeah. You've moved on and you've developed personally. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I, um, I mean, fashion was my biggest driver. Like, I mean, that's, um, I became anorexic and weighed 41 wow. kilos because I wanted to be able to wear whatever I wanted, you know, but God, I was so unhappy. Yeah. Um, it, the most unhappiest period of my life. <sighs> I had, why before I got down to 41 kilos when I weighed 50 I had an amazing body but I hated myself so what's yeah. the point what's the point you know been, like you wake up every morning like that oh my god yeah I used to walk down the street and you know get whistled at but I never believed it oh, no. you know what I'm saying like yeah, it's yeah, um it's... these days you don't get whistled at because it's sexual it's abuse right, or whatever right. but in the days when I was young you know like honking cars honking <laughs> and the whole thing like it's so hilarious because a few accidents Right. And, and I never believed it. I always thought, nah, that can't be. That's they're lying to me. They want something. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it so amazing? it's just interesting your mindset. Isn't it yeah. amazing how the brain yeah. works? That's totally. Absolutely. Totally. Wow. Well, Irina, yeah. if people want to work with you, how can they find you? Well, they can really just Google Irina Geller and yeah. I'm all over the internet. Right. Um, I was actually going to give you some links to my social media, like to my website, Instagram, Facebook. So oh, I might just get them across to you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But simply Google Irina Geller. There's not that many of us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'll come up straight away. I might come up. Um, I'm actually a food and mood coach now. I okay. changed my title, but I might, might come up as an emotional eating coach, which right. I guess I do anyway. So, yeah. Yeah. All kind of yeah. tie into the same, yeah. same area. And if you go on my website, um, I'll actually give you a link to download a free um, uh, free book. Sure. Yeah. Perfect. Tell us about uh, the book. E-book. Um, it's, it's everything that I've spoken about. Okay. You know, so it's a really, really valuable book. And it's a really good way for someone who doesn't feel confident to reach out for help. To just start. It's a nice to, precursor. It's yeah. a nice yeah, prelude, I'd like prelude to call it. To, prelude, to into yeah. This area yeah. And then they might yeah. reach out for some more help. Well, they might, they might not, you know, like it's yeah. just um it's quite educational and um yeah. really good for awareness. True. And mm. a lot of people learn in different ways. Some people learn on their own through research, mm. and a book like that might change their life already. Exactly. So you just never know, everybody has a different need. Yeah, and everyone has a different learning style. That's true. Yeah, 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 for well sure. Done. Well, Irina, thank mm, you so thank much you. for coming on the show. I think that was fascinating as always. Pleasure. I always Pleasure. love listening to all your uh, insights with regards to food thank and you. eating. And I love the thank way you. that you tackle the emotional and mental side. Yeah, so Rather important. Just the tactical side, because I think yeah. that's so important these days. So important. It's so, so like important in everything that we do. Yep. Uh, yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Mm. For everybody out there, I'm going to put all of the links in the notes to Finding Irina on social, on the web, link to her new book. And Thank definitely, you. if you're looking for someone to guide you in this area, reach out to Irina. She's a fantastic at what she does. And she's a wealth of knowledge in this area as well with loads of experience. Thanks so much, Darren. My pleasure. The only thing I didn't do is give some tips. So if you like, yeah, I can... please. Um, yeah, please. My okay. next question for you is, Leave Quick us with tips. some great tips for the audience. Yeah, yeah. So the first tip um, I'd like to give is, you know, get a blood test and um, see where your hormones are at and talk to your GP about, I don't know, you know, some people go on HRT, some people mm -hmm. use natural remedies. There's so many different things. The only thing I would advise is not to use generic HRT. Right. 
right? Because generic HRTs do not take into account what your levels of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone are. Right. And okay, so when you say the generic HRTs, you mean are they prescribed generic ones or are they? Well, they're just off the shelf. Off the shelf, you can buy anybody can buy them. Yeah. Well, not a. I know you need a prescription. Need a prescription, but they're still right. Off but the they're shelf, generic, right? right? Because if you're going to get an HRT, you want one specifically made to your levels, tailored for you, to right. balance out your levels, and uh -huh. we want it to be compounded. Oh, interesting. More natural that way. Okay. Yeah. So okay. compounded HRT, if you're going to go that way. And by the way, wow. I'm very passionate about using HRT and I'm using it. It's okay. changed my life. Wow. Right? It's just balanced everything out. The chemistry and actually compound and compounded. the levels of, of hormones that fit you better. Testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. Okay, good to know. Yeah. So because they're balanced, my other hormones are balanced too. Gotcha. And what, um, hold on, I was just going to say something. Um, yeah, so compounded is really, really important. Right. So that it's specific. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, it's been proven that using HRT, um, there's been many studies, actually helps to prevent osteoporosis. Wow. I'm not just I'm talking about scientific studies. Sure. Sure. Okay. So many scientific studies. Okay. So I would really look into it because a lot of women are against it. Mm -hmm. So if you do have cancer, um, if you're prone to cancer or if you've got the cancer gene in your family, you may not be able to use it. Okay. Right. So it's not for everyone. Discuss it with your GP. Yeah. Um, I would start recording um, the things you're feeling. So when you go to see your GP, you may want to discuss that. Or if you come to someone like myself, you may want to tell me how you're feeling. Yep. Um Manage your energy, so important. You may need extra sleep, just give it to yourself. True. Sleep is the best gift you so can give important. to yourself. And you know what, Seriously. for anybody, I think it's been proven oh. that seven to eight hours of good sleep is important to anyone of any age. More important than exercise, more important than diet. Yeah. Because if you don't sleep enough, it's hard, too hard to stick to your diet, to your nutrition plan. I don't like calling it a diet too hard to exercise you're and you're running on empty like I mean I had adrenal fatigue I burnt out after the fashion industry I had adrenal fatigue for six months it's horrible it really is so manage your energy listen to your body and be nice to your body if you need a break take a break um and remember one thing this is only temporary menopause is a gateway into your golden years love it Trust me, it's the it. best time of your life. I love it. Okay, so <laughs> slide in there and enjoy it. I love it. Well, Irina, yeah. thank you so much. Always been My a pleasure. pleasure. Thank um, you for having me. I always love being on your podcast. Fantastic. You make it so easy and so enjoyable. I uh, appreciate that. You're a good man, uh, good person. Thank you. But to everyone out there, I hope you got as much value as that as I did. I think that was fascinating. And Thanks, uh, definitely reach out to Irina for some more guidance and check out all her presence on social and uh, on the web as well. But uh, everybody out there, have a fantastic day. We'll see you very, very soon for another episode. Bye for now. Thanks, Bye. Irina. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. Thanks again for joining me for another episode of Playing With Perspective, the Suspended Animation Podcast. If you would like to join me as a guest on the show, I would be delighted to collaborate. Feel free to buzz me on 0414 659 800 or email me on darren at suspendedanimation.com.au. I'm always on the lookout for great guests who can share their stories and expertise with my community. Also, if you have been thinking about putting your own podcast together and not sure where to begin, look no further. I run a really simple three-part podcasting course, one-on-one -on -one with me, where I walk you through the entire podcasting journey. You will end up with a fantastic new podcast to start sharing right away. Feel free to get in touch to discuss further. But for now, though, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.